video, we are going to revisit the plug that goes in the base of Enfield musket bullets. So in previous videos, uh, we've talked about the, the various kinds of plugs and the various kinds of Enfield uh, bullets from the Pritchett that had no plug to the Hay and the Boxer bullets that utilized an iron uh, hemispherical plug, an iron a uh, semi-conical plug, uh, and then they settled on a, a boxwood plug. And the final variant of the cartridge used a clay fired plug. So in previous videos that I've shared, um, we've experimented with the plug plate that comes from no bullet molds. And this was cast from a no mold for their uh, boxer variant of the Enfield cartridge bullet that's 0 .550 in diameter. And in previous videos, we've used this plug plate to make plugs out of various materials. So the first thing that I had tried was Bondo, which is essentially a two-part epoxy. And it works pretty well, um, but the problem is, is that um, you know, you've got to mix up enough to, to, to fill the, the cavities in one go. And anything that's left over uh, is waste because it hardens and it's no good anymore. So... Uh, it's also kind of expensive, um, so, you know, it works really well. It makes good rock-hard plugs, um, but it was a little bit of a pain to work with. So in the next video, I had tried Sculpey Clay, which uh, is a, a clay. Uh, it's not really a clay. I think it's a, some kind of polymer, but it's, it's basically a, a crafting clay that uh, you can fire in your oven at relatively low temperatures. I think it's something like 200 degrees or something. I, I don't remember. But anyway, um, it works okay. It makes a, a nice plug and it has very little shrinkage, but um, it's not really that hard. You can see I, it feels almost like a very hard pencil eraser. So you can see I can still crumble this with my, with my thumbnail here. So it's not rock hard like it should be. Uh, for for a, a clay fired plug. So that brings us to today's video and we're going to try using actual clay. This is uh, what's called a low fire clay. Uh, cone 06 is what they say and I am, am totally new at firing clay so I had to look up what all this stuff means and there's basically a, a temperature setting that corresponds to these different cones that you'd put in your your kiln and when the cone melts you know your clay is done so this is this is a, a low temperature a low firing temperature uh, type of clay so what my objective is is to try to use this plug plate with the clay to make the plugs and then we'll see how to fire them now the thing i don't like about firing them is the firing can take you know according to what i'm reading online like a dozen hours or so to fire clay items and I don't want to you know burn I've got a kiln that's that's propane powered I don't want to run that for 12 hours um, I'm thinking I might put them in a little can and put them in the fireplace maybe but I'm hoping that as tiny as they are that they will fire a lot faster uh, so we'll try it out so the first thing to do is to pack these cavities full of clay. So I've just got some um, wax paper here and we'll go to town filling up these cavities with clay. All right, so once we've got the, the cavities filled up with clay, I take a razor blade and we just trim off the excess. Any little defects that are present, you can just use your finger to squish them down. Sometimes when you're using the razor knife, it'll peel them out of the cavity a little bit. And so we'll just press everything down nice and neat. All right, so now we've got our wet clay in, in the plug plate and you can't fire wet clay. Uh, it'll it'll pop and shatter and all that stuff. So the first thing I tried with this was just to, to overturn the plate and pop all the clay bits out 
and then I figured I'd let them air dry. Um, but that just mutilated them trying to push the wet, damp clay out of the plug plate. So then I hit upon the idea, well, let's accelerate the drying using a toaster oven. So that's what we'll do next. So first we have to break loose our plate. You can see we're nice and smooth on the back side and the top side. So next we're gonna put this in the toaster oven and speed up the drying. This is the toaster oven that I use for utility work like this. Uh, picked it up at a, a big box store. They were pretty cheap when I got it. Everything's gotten so expensive now, but uh, probably for less than 20 bucks. If you go to a thrift store or something, you might pick one up for next to nothing. Um, I happen to use this for powder coating modern ammunition, but it's going to do the trick for what we need to do here. So I've got the temperature set on 250 degrees. And so we'll just take our plug plate full of wet clay and we'll put it in here and we'll let it go. Let's try 20 minutes. So I actually let these uh, bake for about 40 minutes, not just 20. I had taken a test plug out and uh, I just hit it with a blowtorch uh, to see if I could harden you know, a single plug. And it, it basically um, you know, shattered, it exploded. There's probably still water inside and it, uh, it just shattered. Um, so I let them bake a little bit longer. <clears throat> Hopefully that drove more of the water out. Now, one thing you can see here with these plugs, uh, made of clay is that they've shrunk and you may think oh that's terrible they've shrunk but in fact uh, it's not so bad after all Let's take a look at see if we can get some of these to come out here so one of the problems that I had with the with the plugs made of Bondo or the Sculpey is that the plug, I thought the plug plate was you know, actually a little too thick because when you made your plugs, they actually stand proud uh, of the base of the plug, which um, you know, probably didn't functionally hurt anything, but it made your cartridges a little bit longer than they should be. And it, and it made it a little bit harder to choke the cartridge and tie it because the cord would catch on the, that lip from the plug. Well, you know, it turns out with these clay plugs after they've shrunk, they fit just perfect. I mean, they are exactly flush with the end of the, of the bullet. So that's great. So next up, uh, now that we've got some plugs and they're somewhat dry, um, I'm gonna try to fire them in my uh, furnace. And I've got a furnace, uh, it's called a cowboy furnace. And I've, I've basically made a, a little uh, bucket here using a soup can. So we're going to put our plugs in the can and uh, put them in the furnace. And, and uh, these, this clay is a 06 cone, so it should fire at about 1,000 degrees. This furnace gets up considerably hotter than that. Uh, it uh, is designed for melting brass. Uh, that's why I bought it to get into brass uh, casting, which I never did. <laughs> now I use it mostly for melting down 60-pound pigs of lead into ingots. But uh, anyway... Um, it works. Hopefully it'll be, you know, it'll be definitely be hot enough. My biggest fear is that I don't overheat them and melt them. Uh, evidently, if you overheat clay, it can slump. But these things are so tiny, uh, hopefully they don't have enough mass to really uh, deform a whole lot when you heat them up. So we'll, we'll get to that in just a minute. So I've got the uh, furnace going here. This is a, I think this is called a cowboy furnace. I bought it, I don't know, probably 15 years ago. It's basically a uh, propane uh, Venturi burner system and uh, basically a giant blowtorch in the middle of a refractory cement bucket is what it amounts to. <clears throat> but it'll melt 60 pounds of lead in, about, in, in under 20 minutes. So it, it'll definitely uh, get some high temperatures, certainly hot enough for, uh, for, for firing our clay. Uh, like I said, I hope, hope we don't overdo it, but got our our uh, plugs here in our can and uh, they're not glazed so hopefully they don't stick together
about clay firing, you're supposed to fire these things twice. You're supposed to do something called a bisque fire, and then you're supposed to do your final fire. And I don't know, you know what I'm doing. I've never done much with ceramics, so I'm just going to cook these things for 30 minutes and see what happens. Well, let's see what we've got here. I, I let these go for just a little over a half an hour and uh, let the, the furnace cool down a little bit with them inside so I didn't thermally shock it when I opened the cover. So let's see what we got here. These are, these are still a little warm. Yeah, they're, they're still a little hot but uh, you can see they're changing color here. They're, they're not the pinkish color that they were when they were dry out of the um, toaster oven. Some of them maybe still have a little bit of pinkish color to them, but the rest have turned kind of a, a mottled gray. And they seem awful hard. I, I can't really hold on to them because they're still hot. That one's cooled off a bit. Yeah, well, they certainly passed the, the thumbnail test. I mean, these things are really hard. So I think that would probably do. Uh, I don't know that, you know, these are truly vitrified like an actual fired thing, but uh, I suspect they are. They're at least, whew, that one's hot. <laughs> They're at least as, as hard as the Bondo plugs. Uh, so I think this is probably uh, onto something here. You know, it's uh, winter time here, and uh, if I was to do this again, you know, I would probably just fill this can full of plugs, and you know, you could crank out 500 plugs with the you know toaster oven, just baking them every 20 minutes in your uh, in the no plug plate. You know, you could probably you know get 500 of these things in in no time at all, and uh, put them in your, a, a, a can like this, and just set them in the fireplace. You know, that's gonna be plenty hot enough. This clay is, like I said, low fire clay. It, um, you know, vitrifies at around a thousand degrees or so, I think is what uh, the kiln chart said for a cone 06. So it should get plenty hot enough just sitting in the campfire or in your fireplace. And, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter if ash or anything gets in there, as you can see, that, that sorts out just fine. So uh, I, I think this is onto something, you know, the. The plugs in 1860, the final iteration of the Enfield cartridge used fired clay plugs. And uh, here we are replicating fired clay plugs. So there you have it. Hope you enjoyed the video. And uh, if you liked it, please click subscribe down below and uh, like also. Thanks.